Well, hello and welcome to Rasawa TV. You're watching India Fights back with the host Rajat Kane. Well, it's a show that gets you latest on how India is preparing to fight COVID-19 pandemic and also the latest of development around the world on how each and every country is, or for that matter, how the scientific community is battling with this pandemic. In a significant development, the interim findings on the phase one clinical trial of Bharat Biotech's co-vaccine has reported no serious adverse effects. Once again, it's phase one interim findings of the clinical trial of the co-vaccin. The co-vaccin is one of the three coronavirus vaccine candidates which are being considered for emergency use authorization in India. Around 375 participants were enrolled in the first phase clinical trials of Bharat Biotech's co-vaccin. Although the results of a single phase, phase one in this case, doesn't give complete picture of the drug's efficacy. Now, this is a usual procedure. It's not just about Covaxin. It's about any medical drug administered for the larger use or for that matter, mass vaccination. The first phase or initial phase is never considered to be the complete picture. It's all the phases. And then the collective analysis and thereafter the final results that we get can be construed or can be deemed to be considered as what is the true picture. A more extensive phase 3 trials could perhaps throw a better light. Given more than 25,000 volunteers are administered the candidate vaccine. So how does these interim findings, so what does these interim findings mean for us to discuss further in this details? We are joined with two very important guests, Dr. Ramesh Verma, Professor PGI MS Rohtak and Professor YK Gupta, former head of department pharmacology of India Institute of Medical Sciences. Well, many thanks, gentlemen, for joining us in the show. Let me start with you, Dr. Ramesh Verma. How promising are the first initial, or to say, the interim findings of the phase one trial of Covaxin? Sir, over to you. Sir, as you know, uh, I am the co-investigator in the co uh, co-vaccine. Yeah. And the co-vaccine, you know, is, uh, uh, you can say, started by the government of India, ICMR, mm -hmm. with the help of Pune, NIV Pune, and uh, Bharat Biotech. Mm -hmm. And this co-vaccine, the trial was starting in July to 2020. And in this trial, we have to cover 375, the healthy volunteers we have to cover, whose age is 18 to 55 years. Healthy volunteer means... Those volunteers who have no any disease like chronic disease, like diabetic, hypertension, not any chronic disease or, for example, the heart disease. We have to cover these healthy volunteers. And we have injected the two injections, uh, mm -hmm. the dose of 0.5 ml, one, for example, on the on two days and after right. 15 days, second injection we have given. Uh, and we found that at the, after the injection uh, that uh, the patient, they are the safe. And we observe the patient for two hours. After two hours, we have discharged to the patient and every day we call to them for one week. And we, we, you can say the interim analysis, the report which comes today, it showed the robust immune immunogenicity. Means there is a lot of, you can say, the fourfold rise of antibody in the subjects. Okay. So, well, these were the initial remarks of Dr. Ramesh Varma. Let me go off to Professor Vaikhi Gupta. Uh, Professor, uh, if, if we talk for the procedures... Of, of, of mere clinical trials. Uh, when the first phase of clinical trial, the interim findings point towards a positive development. Now, uh, how much of a variance do we see usually when, when we administer or when we analyze a vaccine of this quantum in the subsequent clinical trial phases? Is there, uh, have there been a history of any large scale uh, differences in the findings of the initial phase and then the later phases? Professor I Bukta? think uh, when we answer this question, we have to understand the methodology. Mm -hmm. When we do phase one trial is primarily to look the safety and also in this case, the immunogenicity. Okay. And when okay. we look safety, we look for safety, that means you look for reactogenicity. Mm -hmm. That means 
where you inject it, is there any local site reaction? Is there a pain? There is an ulceration? There is a fever or like that, allergic reaction? Right. And you also look for what are the broader safety issues? Maybe there is a there is a neurological problem, there is a cardiovascular problem, there is anaphylaxis, there is an SAE. You see, there are two things. One is AE, which is called as an adverse event, mm -hmm. and other is as an SAE, which is called as a serious adverse event. Right. And when we say SAE, it is very classically defined. Either there is a death or there is a hospitalization, there is a prolonged hospitalization, there is a life-threatening reactions, and there is a, in case of pregnancy, which is not in this case, mm -hmm. there is a, uh, uh, abnormality in childbirth. In this mm -hmm. case, incidentally, or fortunately, I would say, there were adverse events. No drug can be there without adverse events. Mm -hmm. There were adverse events, which all were mild, and some adverse events were moderate. The right. best thing, none of these adverse events required any medication or any hospitalization, okay. or a, they just got resolved by themselves without any treatment. Mm -hmm. So this is very much acceptable. There was one SAE, serious adverse event, mm -hmm. which is because Technically, this was decided because this required hospitalization. Mm -hmm. When this happens, the next step is that you do careful causality assessment. Okay. That whether this was because of the vaccine or whether because of any yes. other thing. Yeah. It yeah. can be totally unrelated. Even if the person falls down, it is an SAE, which is totally unrelated to that. So in this case, this singular SAE, which happened in 375 subjects, was yeah. totally related. And therefore, we can conclude by this phase 1 slash 2A that this vaccine candidate, I would still call a vaccine candidate, but vaccine mm -hmm. is safe. Okay. When you say safe, I would say reasonable safe. Mm -hmm. And it is a very robust immunogenicity because the immune response got posted. And mm. this was compared to other competitive things. Now, as you ask, this will form the basis of going to the next phase, phase mm. three. Mm. And when you go to phase three, it has to be done a multi-centric, maybe 19, 20 centers or maybe more than that. Mm. And it has to have a larger number of population. Yeah. And yeah. in this case, the adequate number of population was statistically calculated because of the power as mm. 26,000 odd or maybe slightly more. Mm -hmm. yeah. In yeah, this case, yeah. we expect that the, there could be some adverse event, there could be some SAE, but mm -hmm. we can presume that if this is extrapolated, this is reasonable safe. And that is why DCGI or any regulator gives permission. Now you go ahead. That's what is the very encouraging thing. And more important thing is this is an India-specific Indian Council of Medical yeah. Research, yes. NIV, yes. and Indian pharmaceutical company. And that means make in India product. And we are proud of it. Hmm. Right, right, right. That's very important, uh, Professor Vaike Gupta, and as you mentioned, it's fairly promising to have uh, these findings. Dr. Ramesh Verma, as you worked quite extensively on the vaccine and the analysis of the first phase of the clinical trials, so any other significant finding besides what you mentioned that has come out of the first phase of internal findings, interim findings? Um, they could, um, basically, in the first phase, uh, you know, uh, we have to take the samples in between the when we follow the this patient we have mm -hmm. to take the samples and when we take the sample we have to detect the neutralizing antibodies if mm -hmm. the neutralizing antibody according to who increase four file rise uh, in the body it means the vaccine your vaccine is very very effective so mm -hmm. we will find found in this uh, phase 1 trial 
very robust immune response by the body by the by this uh, you can say the co vaccine so i think this vaccine will be fruitful in the coming days and uh, will help uh, to the poor uh, country like ours okay okay right 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 uh, professor gupta uh, so uh, clearly like uh, as uh, dr ramesh varma who has extensively worked on the vaccine he just mentioned that there are the findings happens to be fairly positive now uh, moving ahead and now if we if we look at the phase 3 trials now that perhaps can throw better light as you also mentioned that the sample size is 25000 but uh, can you just uh, run through the pro process of how these sample of of volunteers would be selected like will it will it have a representation from across the age groups and of course like as we know that uh, the 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 effects of vaccine i i mean any medication reacts differently on different groups uh, so all these all these uh, considerations are taken into place whenever we we go ahead with such an operation i i would request my co panelist to respond to this better because he has uh, then but in principle mm -hmm. when we do phase 3 you look into the real life situation and mm -hmm. therefore you include say in phase 1 you have a less inclusion exclusion criteria a bit narrowed down mm -hmm. and now because that is a basically healthy subject and vaccine is also in a healthy subject the phase 3 but here you may include the comorbid conditions and you mm -hmm. may include the wider range and therefore that is why you do in phase 3 detailed and that's why your number of subjects go much higher yes, because yes. you have to account for all the possible variation and that's why you can expect some adverse event but but when you look for a situation like corona which is considered as an emergency need or which is called as a compassionate you need then the regulator with the help of experts deliberate on this in detail and may come to a conclusion that this much result is sufficient mm. or may require more data to have an emergency use permission or authorization right when right. we say emergency use authorization this implied that this will contemplate that the well designed study has to continue in parallel mm -hmm. then only right. you will come to know so this is emergency use always comes with some caveat right Over. right 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 well dr ramesh verma uh, i'll ask a same question to you now given the larger sample size in phase 3 trials so how that will help in understanding the vaccine in further greater details in terms of the sample of volunteers you have chosen given their age brackets and of course uh, the health condition and as we know different med a medication perhaps reacts differently on different age groups so how that study will help in understanding the effectiveness of or efficacy of vaccine better for better because in the phase 3 we have to cover the 26000 individual from mm -hmm. all over the country if you cover the large population no doubt the efficacy of the vaccine that will be comes out because uh, in the phase 3 uh, this uh, 26000 person we have to cover the, in, in the 25 sites and 1000 approximately from one site so if the data comes from the large population it will show the safety the immunogenicity as well as the efficacy of the vaccine also right 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 well so clearly as as both the panelists have mentioned that when we analyze a vaccine or for that matter any medical drug on on a larger sample of volunteers larger sample of of trials so in that case several factors come into light and then it therefore helps us in deducing the efficacy of the vaccine professor gupta uh, now uh, with the first stage or the or, or the first stage of of uh, the the interim findings the first stage is out and we are on on the third stage so usually how long does this process take why i'm asking this question as uh, there is there is this 
race towards having a vaccine. Of course, there is eagerness to have, have a vaccine. And of course, there is also a hesitancy in terms of having a complete information about vaccine. So it rests upon experts like you so as to give us all the information possible as to how long will it usually take uh, for, for any, any stage three results to throw uh, 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 results uh, so as to get the complete efficacy of a vaccine or any candidate vaccine, sir. I would again say that uh, for understanding this, the entire process of clinical trial need to be understood. Mm -hmm. Now, when the phase one trial is over, mm -hmm. it gives also a better idea whether our sample size need to be recalculated or okay. the 26,000 which is arrived is, is sufficient. Mm -hmm. Because this is called as a power of clinical trial. And power means how much is your expectation or anticipation of the efficacy in terms of a primary outcome and in terms of a secondary outcome? Mm -hmm. When we say we decide number on the basis of primary outcome, then you have some possibility assumption. And then you make that to achieve this, how much expected number is to be included. Mm -hmm. Similarly, if you expect some side effect to happen, then you also achieve, calculate the number that if I take this much number of subjects and it still doesn't happen, that means our safety limit is very high. Mm -hmm. It inter means that you have not covered the entire globe. That means right. there is always a possibility of some adverse event. And mm -hmm. that is why in all such situations, new vaccine as well as the old vaccine, what is called as a strong post-marketing surveillance. Mm -hmm. In vaccine, it's called as an AEFI, adverse event after immunization. In India, we have a very strong AEFI system. That means if anything goes wrong, any adverse e event happen in any mm -hmm. person, instantly this has to be investigated for causality assessment. Mm -hmm. If this is wrongly done, it is disaster. If this is not done, this is disaster. Mm -hmm. Because wrongly done means is a good vaccine candidate may get a pause. And if there are a cluster or if there is a serious adverse event related, then the regulator with the experts, the government will decide whether there need to be pause in the trial or administration or this risk is acceptable. Mm -hmm. Always any and also in the case of vaccine, you always decide between the risk-benefit assessment. And if the benefit overweighs the risk, the simple risk or minor risk, then it is the case to continue. If it is reversed, then it is case to reconsider. Mm -hmm. so that is why. Right, right, right. Uh, Professor Ramesh Varma, as uh, both of you panelists agree that the first phase the first, the internal findings, of the uh, interim findings of first phase happens to be fairly promising. And uh, inter, if, we, if, we, if we talk about the antibody response, it has induced a neutralizing response, which means that the vaccine-induced response are comparable to those observed in the COVID-19 uh, uh, happens to be fairly positive. Now, as we go to the subsequent phase, Dr. Verma, uh, what are the caveats that, that usually the scientific community looks for? Like, is it the adverse effects in general or is it about the sample size uh, 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 in particular to talk of? The caveats. Basically, the adverse event basically usually occur, uh, you can say, within two, one hour or two hours. Okay. But we are following for one week also so that there is a fair event. So we must consider these events day by day. And if if you can say if the event occur, so we have to notice to the DCIs as well as to the our ethical community also. Mm -hmm. And if the sample size increases, so we should know more about the events and then any serious adverse event if any occur in this vaccine trial. Dr. Gupta, like uh, now this is now this is a fairly generic question. Like, uh, is having a vaccine? would mean the end of this pandemic or it will be work in progress for quite some time that i mean vaccine will be tried candidate vaccine will be there will be a trial and then the vaccine will be out 
and then maybe like it'll take some time for us to, to adjust to it. So will it be a work in progress or it means you have a shot of vaccine in the, in, in, in the, in the designated intervals and you're completely uh, free of any sort of virus? I would say the history tells us that work never gets completed. It is always, I would say, safely, mm. I would say, work in progress. Mm. When you say work in progress, you might reach 99th floor. That means you may reduce the incidence, you may curtail the incidence, but to say that it is 100% deleted or 100% absent, it is very, very, very difficult. And that's okay. why I again always repeat that this is a multi-prone effort must continue. The vaccine, the preventive measures, which you always project is that the put the mask, mm -hmm. social distancing, yeah. and... Uh, and hand wash, these must not be at any time compromised. Hmm. We must not get over assessment of vaccine success. Hmm. You should not consider under false assurance, a false insurance. That means vaccine lagwa liya, so now you go and forget everything. It right. is it right. hazardous. So that is, I think, the mantra Vaccine is here to help the society. Vaccine mm -hmm. is here to help the individual. But the person himself is the best help for himself. Mm -hmm. Nobody else, no regulation, no society. Himself, I am responsible for my safety. Over. Well, well. Uh, so you mean to say that we need to follow the COVID appropriate behavior for a long time, even after the vaccine is out. Well, clearly, uh, if uh, Dr. Verma, if you are with us, uh, I mean, as we end towards the close of the show, as you work very closely on the vaccine and investigated uh, the co-vaccine, uh, just one small question to you, sir, if you're online with us. Uh, will, the, once we have this vaccine, do you also consider it will be fairly work in progress for quite some time? Or, or you think that we can easily say that we have finally got the vaccine and now possibly, I mean, we are heading now towards ending this pandemic. Um, till the vaccine comes, I, I request to all individuals, please follow three rules. We wear face mask, either simple cloth, three layer or 95. Second one, maintain social distance. Either you have to maintain social distance up to one meter or maximum up to two meters. And always use hand washer, hand sanitizer, or wash your hand with simple soap. So this is my request to all individual, all of our uh, people of our country. So please follow three, these three rules. So just one last question. Uh, uh, so, and once we are administered the vaccine, I mean the group, the people as, as has been uh, listed, the ones who are about to get the first vaccine shot once it's approved by the scientific community. So even after having a vaccine shot, do you think that we should be really apprehensive towards what we do and how we behave uh, outside the purview of where we are in secure environments? Or we should be completely, uh, you can say, carefree about it? Dr. Varma, if you can hear me. No, no. Well, we have to, you can say, when we inject first dose and mm. second dose after one month, it's the natural phenomenon of our body the antibody appear after 42 days. Mm -hmm. so we have to follow these, these three rules, as I told you, the face mask, the social distancing, and hand wash till the antibody appear in the body. So please follow these three rules as I request by again and again. Right, right, right. Well, uh, so there we go. Uh, we have both the experts who happens to be quite at the opinion, strong opinion rather, that even after having a vaccine or even after having a vaccine shot, we really need to follow COVID appropriate behavior and we have to be very careful about what we do. So especially uh, in terms of social distancing, face mask and washing our hands. Well, that's it in this edition of the show and many thanks to both of you for elucidating the results or to say the, the interim findings of the first phase of the COVAX scene and the promising picture it has thrown especially with the light of no adverse effects and then what we look ahead at a larger picture when we have 
the findings or to say final findings of the COVAX scene in due course. Many thanks for watching this edition of India Fights Back. Well, before we leave, a small appeal for our viewers. Defeat coronavirus pandemic. Keep wearing face mask. Maintain physical distance. Keep washing hands. Follow physical distancing, six feet at least, and these are the small things that we can do to defeat this pandemic.